California Senator Dianne Feinstein worked for more than a year to get the assault weapons bill passed in the face of ferocious opposition from the National Rifle Association. She says she got the best she could. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. Do you believe that U.S. citizens should be forced to obey a United Nations gun ban treaty? Well, first of all, there's no such thing as a United Nations treaty. A treaty is not made by the United Nations, but by a group of governments. The UN small arms, small arms process consists of governments who've come together what, what is to be done about this global problem. The UN does not exist separate from governments. And second, the topic of discussion isn't about a gun ban. We're talking about taking some moderate measures to reduce the illicit traffic in, in guns. And I was pleased to hear that Mr. Lapierre agrees that bad guys should be disarmed. Traffickers are among the very worst guys there are. International treaties are the usual way to deal with weapons. We have treaties on nuclear, on chemical, on biological weapons. The, and that's because countries have recognized the destructive potential of those weapons, and they want to hold governments and manufacturers accountable. Guns are the only weapons left outside of international treaties, and these are the weapons killing hundreds of thousands of people. So yes, the U.S. should acknowledge that it is part of the world. It's not exempt from the world's problems. In fact, it contributes disproportionately to many of the world's problems, and it should cooperate with other U.N. member states to solve those problems. Thanks, Rebecca. Wayne, that sounds perfectly natural. What's your response? Well, my response is the Constitution of the United States. Our Supreme Court has ruled that no treaty supersedes the authority of the United States Constitution. In 1957, in Reed versus Covert, the Supreme Court said, no agreement with a foreign nation can confer power on the Congress or on any branch of government which is free of the restraints of the Constitution. Where Ms. Peters is headed with this is a UN conference in 2006 to write a, try to write a treaty basically banning civilian ownership of firearms. She doesn't like our Bill of Rights. She doesn't like our Second Amendment any more than she likes our First Amendment, where she has said, and I quote back in 4-4-2000, the First Amendment in the U.S. basically entitles anyone to tell any lies they want as long as it's in the name of politics. She doesn't like our freedoms, First Amendment, Second Amendment, and we're not going to let Ms. Peters or the United Nations You take recently them. wrote, moderate gun control offers enormous dividends in public safety. Could you please tell us exactly what you mean by moderate gun control? We're not talking about banning all guns. We know that guns are not going to be banned outright. But moderate gun control means people who own guns should have to have a license. Guns should be registered. It means ensuring that certain categories of guns are not available to private citizens or to people who haven't had particular training and who are not subject to military or official discipline. For example, high power, rapid, rapid fire weapons like the ones that we banned in Australia. There should be a limit on the number of guns that civilians can own. And guns need to be kept out of the hands of people who are irresponsible, domestic violence offenders, of children. We need gun laws that put a reasonable obstacle in the path of someone likely to do something irrational and damaging. And the laws need to recognize that good people sometimes do bad things. There is not a clear distinction between the good guys and the bad guys in the world. As <laughs> and that, that, that only happens in the movies. So that seems... Uh, reasonable, reasonable laws, reasonable control. If Ms. Peters and the UN can't tell the difference between the good guys and the bad guys, I, I, I think we're all in trouble. It, uh, the fact is, uh, breathing, it, it's as simple as water quenches thirst, uh, food quenches hunger. Good people know that a firearm will protect them. It, it, it goes back to humanity. I mean, people can tell the difference between criminals and bad governments and Mother Teresa. But, but let me say this. Ms. Peters, the audience deserves to know the truth. What you're really after is a global permission slip. Your definition of moderate 
is the most extreme definition imaginable. From your own words, here you are in a CNN interview in October 2003. You want to ban every rifle that can shoot over 100 meters. On CNN, every rifle over 100 meters. That's a football field for people back in the U.S. That's every hunting rifle in the United States. The founding document of IANSA, your very own organization, says, and I quote, reduce the availability of weapons to civilians in all societies. Uh, duck, duck hunters in, in, in Australia taking away their pump shotguns. Here's your ad. And I can give you all these NGOs you work with, pamphlet after pamphlet after pamphlet. I can stack them to the ceiling where you call for no to individual armament. So let's be honest. You want to take guns away from all people, a global bureaucracy to do it, we're not going to let it happen. So is, is that true? We want to see a drastic reduction in gun ownership across the world. I think you really believe, as you've said in the past, that semi-automatic rifles and shotguns have no, well, really what we've just been saying, have no legitimate uh, role in civilian hands. Yes, I do. Semi-automatic weapons are designed to kill large numbers of people. They were designed for military use. Many people have bought them for other purposes, for example, for hunting, because they've been available. But there's no justification for semi-automatic weapons to be owned by civilian by members of the civilian population. When we were campaigning for the reform of the gun laws in Australia, one of the interesting groups that came out to support the new gun laws was a group called the Professional Hunters Association. They're the group that, that they're the original crocodile Dundee, you know, the macho big guys who control feral animals in the national parks, all of them. And they said they supported the new gun laws because Anyone who needed a semi-automatic to kill an animal was a city boy who shouldn't be out there with a gun in the first place. Yes, we believe that semi-automatic rifles and shotguns have no legitimate role in civilian hands. And not only that, handguns have no, civil, no legitimate role in civilian hands. Well, we were, we were almost there on a point of agreement, I thought, until that last piece. So what do you say? I, I was just going to say, we're, we're finally starting to get to the point. I mean, the fact is, Ms. Peters and Iansa and her UN crowd believe every firearm has no legitimate use, not, not just semi-autos, but pump actions, uh, shotguns, any rifle that can shoot over 100 yards. Hunters know that's every hunting rifle out there. Uh, handguns, you don't believe handguns have any legitimate use? The truth is, there's no such thing as a legitimate role for a firearm. Isn't that your real opinion, Ms. Peters? No, we recognize that hunting, for example, plays an important role in many cultures. You do not need a semi-automatic firearm, you do not need a handgun to kill a deer, to go hunting. We recognize that target shooting is also a sport in many countries. One of the concerns that was raised with the reform of the gun laws in Australia was that this would affect our Olympic performance. Actually, in that same year, Australia did very well in the shooting at the Olympics. And this year, I guess Britain didn't do that well in the shooting events at the, Olymp at the Olympics, but they did have their most successful Olympics yet. You can be a sporting nation without semi-automatic rifles. Really or more hands. about sporting activities, mm -hmm. which you are involved in legitimate sporting activities. What are you going to do? How can you define where are the limits going to be, which I think was what the, what the kernel of the question was. How are you going to define what will be allowed and what won't be allowed? Well. The, the definition of what's a legitimate sporting activity, of course, is always under pressure. The gun lobby has been pushing for the definition of target shooting to be expanded. So, for example, to be able to have semi-automatic rifles and shotguns as a legitimate target sport, which it is not. The, is it in the Olympics? No. <laughs> uh, Right, hang, hang on a minute, let's, let's not just get unruly. Uh, I think, yeah, so, times change. I know that the, it, pistol shooting used to be a sport that was allowed in the UK, and it no longer is. I'm sad for you. I suppose if you miss your sport, take up another sport. Take up a sport that does not require a weapon invented for the sole and specific purpose of killing another human being.
15-year-old at home with his 12-year-old sister when burglars try to break in. That's when investigators say the boy grabbed his dad's assault rifle and started shooting, and he hit one of the men repeatedly. This all unfolded this afternoon in the 2600 block of Royal Place Court. 11 News reporter Sherman Min Chow talked with neighbors and investigators. Anxious family and friends cross the yellow tape into a surreal crime scene. A 15-year-old boy and his 12-year-old sister had been home alone in the Mount Royal Village subdivision. And at about 2.30, a pair of home invaders tried the front and back doors, then broke a back window. A young boy was protecting his sister. You know, he was in fear for his life and, and for his sister's life. The brother grabbed his father's assault rifle and knew what to do with it. His dad is a Precinct 1 deputy constable. We don't try to hide things from our children in law enforcement. The children were not hurt. The home invaders fled, leaving a trail of blood. Two suspects showed up at Tomball Hospital. One, the adult, had multiple gunshot wounds and was flown to Memorial Hermann Hospital. The second, a juvenile, was taken back here. Detectives walked the suspect through the crime scene. Meantime, neighbors say burglars had recently struck the two houses next door, which included the deputy's home. They stole everything, what they have inside. They really did it one time. And this may be the last time, at least for these suspects. In Northwest Terrace County, Shernman Chow, 11 News. And that ends with one person shot. Jill Monier just spoke with investigators. She joins us live from the scene. What's going on, Jill? Carrie, investigators say a 14-year-old boy shot a suspect who was trying to break into his house. Let me step out of the way here for you so you can see the scene behind me at the 5500 block of Minton. That's Minton uh, near Baseline, the Levine area here in Phoenix. Police say a 14-year-old was inside his house with his siblings, ages 12, 8, and 10. When they heard a knock on the door, he looked outside, saw a woman he didn't recognize. He went back about his business and later heard the door uh, rattling and banging like somebody was trying to get inside. He went upstairs where he got a handgun. And police say as he was coming down the stairs, the door broke open. At that time, he saw a male suspect with a weapon pointed towards him, and he shot that suspect who was taken to the hospital in extremely critical condition. Police don't believe that any other shots were fired uh, during this incident, but they are still at this time looking for this woman who was with this man. It canvassed this neighborhood asking people here if they... Uh, uh, have saw anything else they're still wanting to know you know why these people targeted this home who this woman is still a lot more questions than answers at this hour they're asking people if they saw anything to call silent witness at 480 witness again we're at a home invasion shooting at 55 55th avenue rather and baseline will have more as it becomes available